Good morning. I hope everyone had the best Christmas ever. That you got to spend time with your family and friends and you had some good food. I know you had a warm house unless you had the air conditioner cranked up for you. And I hope that you found time to remember the real reason that we celebrate this special day. I'm glad you've joined in for Sunday school. We'll be in session four in the quarterly, but we'll be moving away from Ezekiel for this one lesson into the gospel of Matthew. And I would guess in recent days or weeks, many have invested time and expense and energy into searching, searching for the perfect Christmas gift for someone special. Well, throughout history, many people have searched for treasures. Some pertain to the gain of material wealth. Uh, you've all seen movies where someone's got a map of a buried treasure and there's an intense search for them to find it. But in re real life, in reality, many searches uh, have been revolved around Christ. There was a search for the Holy Grail, the cup that was used at the Last Supper. And legend has it that King Arthur in his knights uh, had a quest to find that cup. And then artifacts related to the Ark of the Covenant have also created quests to solve the mystery of its disappearance that occurred when Babylon conquered Ju Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. Well, the lesson for today focuses on a different kind of search. It's one by men who traveled to find a child that was born they believed king of the Jews. Now, these were Gentile men. They were not Jewish people, but they believed that this child born was very significant in the lives of the Jewish people. In the first chapter of the book of Matthew, uh, Jesus' ancestry was traced. He was a descendant of Abraham. <clears throat> His lineage was connected to David, and he was the anointed one of God. He was from a prestigious bloodline that included kings. But Matthew made mention of several women to show that Jesus came for the redemption of all people. No, with no regard to their backgrounds or their ethnic, no regards to whether they were rich or poor or uh, where they came from. Rahab, Rahab <clears throat> lived in Jericho when Israel conquered that city. Ruth was a Moabite, and Bathsheba was more than likely a Hittite. Now, Tamar's ethnic identity was not clear. She was mentioned too, but the mention of these women who, at that time, society viewed as inferior to the genealogy of Jesus indicated that he came to seek and to save every person. The first scriptures for today's lesson come from Matthew chapter 2, and it will be verses 1 through 3. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. <clears throat> the events of this chapter occur sometime after Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, but the exact time has not been determined. It was, however, not while Jesus was an infant being cradled in the manger, which is what most Christmas pictures and stories depict. At the time of his birth, Herod was a Roman appointed king of Judea who had self appointed himself the role of king of the Jews. And that was to a great disapproval of the Jewish people because they thought of him more as a dictator. Now he had wealth and administrative skills which were important for a king. His enemies even admired his building projects and he used that skill of the building projects to try to win over the Jews by building them a great temple in Jerusalem because remember the temple had been destroyed in previous years 
but the people still did not trust him. This man loved power, but he suffered from paranoia and he was known to have fits of rage and jealousy. He thought everyone was out to overthrow him. He killed his wife, some associates, and two, at least two, of his own sons. So when the scripture says that he was deeply disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him, there was good reason for the people to be stressed. Now, Bethlehem was about five or six miles um, away from Jerusalem, and Jesus' birth had occurred approximately two years prior to this visit by the wise men to Herod. And no one knows exactly who they were or what had made them wise. They could have been priests, <clears throat> philosophers, or they could have been men who observed and studied the night skies. We traditionally number them as three, but more than likely that's due to the fact that exactly three gifts were named. There could have been more, and like these facts are not known for sure, neither is for certain whether where they came from. They arrived from the east, so it could have been Babylon or Persia or the Arabian Desert. And because the Jews had been exiled to Babylon, and many of them chose to stay there even after King Cyrus allowed them to return to their homelands, these men evidently knew of the, the expectations of a Jewish Messiah. And after a possible two-year journey, they got to Jerusalem and asked King Herod of the whereabouts of this baby that was born King of the Jews. They stated their purpose in finding him was to worship him. Now, it seems a little bit sad that these men traveled a great distance to find the Christ child and the entire population of Jerusalem, only five or six miles away from the birthplace, was not in a stir to find him. Well, Herod, remember, had labeled himself as king of the Jews. And here were these men, foreigners, asking him where to find the king that they sought. Well, it didn't take long for him to spring into action to locate this new king of the Jews, as we'll see in verses four through six. And when he had gathered all, gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. No doubt Herod was troubled because he thought here's another person that's going to try to take away his power, his throne, and his wealth. So he assembled all the Jewish scribes and the chief priests. I mean, they were all right there in Jerusalem, not in or on their way to Bethlehem. The scribes were considered experts in God's written word. They had copied preserved and interpreted the Mosaic law. The chief priests functioned as the heads of the 24 orders of priests. Now they belong to the Sadducee party and the scribes were the Pharisees. And I'm sure when we study, have, have studied in the past the Easter uh, events, you've heard of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. <clears throat> well, Herod, expected that this group of men would know something about the birth of this that these visitors were looking for and they gave him the information that he requested well actually he demanded it and he was the king in charge and he was uh could be uh, violent so of course they gave him the information and according to the scripture they said the birthplace of the messiah would be bethlehem of judea now these scribes and pharisees had a great knowledge of the scriptures, but that did not equate to them having a right relationship with God. Bethlehem was a very small town compared to Jerusalem, but God had promised in the scriptures that from that small, insignificant spot on the map, a savior for the world would come. He would be the governor. Prophets in the past had the responsibility to, to represent God and deliver his messages to his people. 
And a priest was supposed to represent the people to God, offering sacrifices to him on behalf of the people. But the Old Testament prophets declared that this Messiah, born in Bethlehem, would serve as a priest and a prophet to the people. He came to bring a new message to the people, and he would serve as the last and only sacrifice ever needed. However, most of the people of that time were expecting an earthly, powerful ruler, just like Herod thought. So, once he discovered the place of birth of this new king, then he needed to know the time of his birth in order to continue with his ploy to gain information for his own evil purposes, as we'll see in verses 7 through 10. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. This is a sly person. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard, when they had heard the king, they departed and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Obviously, Herod perceived this child as a threat to his seat on the throne. He assumed that the star that the wise men had followed must have appeared at the time of the baby's birth. So he slyly asked them when they first saw it. When did you first see this star? Now, because he calculated the time to be about two years, because they had traveled about two years to get there, uh, he eventually gave orders for all the males to and under in the vicinity of Bethlehem to be executed. Now, Joseph was given a uh, direction by God to get Mary and the, and the baby out of Bethlehem and go to Egypt for a while. So he was safe. But in the meeting with the wise men, he asked, Herod asked, well, uh, would you just come back and let me know where you find this child so that I could go and worship as well? Now, Herod trusted that these men would search diligently, that they would find the child, and that they would bring news back to him, or else he would have sent some of his own men to travel with them and bring back that location information. Herod probably did not expect anyone to go against his request or his commands or demands. Now, the men resumed their travel as soon as he released them, and they followed the star as it moved them to the location of the young child, not an infant. In this short travel, which remember only five or six miles, they must have felt overwhelming excitement like most of the children felt last Friday night. These Gentiles were on a verge of seeing the Messiah, and they were overflowing with joy. And we might wonder what they thought they would do once they saw the child. There's a song that we hear now that, that, that makes us wonder what we might do when we see Jesus in heaven. The song is, I can only imagine, I'm sure you've heard it, but the words say, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I sing hallelujah or will I be able to speak it all? So the final scriptures for today tell us their reactions. And that would be verses 11 through 12. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Upon entering the house and seeing the child with Mary, they bowed and they fell down to their knees to worship him. They demonstrated worship by their actions and by the gifts that they brought. Offering gifts 
was important in the ancient East when you approached a person of superior rank. So they offered gifts that were fit for royalty. It didn't matter that this child was born in a stable and that he was now living in a small home rather than a palace. The gold that they gave had beauty and value and that symbolized his royalty. The frankincense was a symbol of his deity. Frankincense was used in making perfume for the tabernacle's most holy place. Now that was the place that housed the Ark of the Covenant and represented God's dwelling place in the temple. Myrrh, however, pointed to the death of the king that these wise men found. It was a spice used for anointing and embalming upon death. God guided the wise men to Bethlehem with a star, but in a dream, he warned them against retracing their path through Jerusalem, which allowed them to avoid reporting to Herod. They took a risk in disobeying King Herod. He was a vicious and a vindictive man, but the wise men obeyed a far greater king. While the Jewish leaders missed God's Messiah, these men of wisdom, Gentiles sought him out. Wise men today, wise people, not just men, still seek this king of kings and receive eternal salvation. But sadly, in our prosperous land, we had a, have a lot of empty seats in our churches. While missionaries on foreign fields find people in remote areas of the world who are eager to learn about and accept the salvation that's freely offered. I want to thank you for joining in today. Next week, we'll go back to our study in Ezekiel, and I hope you'll be able to join in then and begin your new year in Sunday school. I want to play a song that speaks so clearly the message of today's lesson. It's titled, Wise Men Still Seek Him. So now I have to press all of these Check all of these little boxes on the computer if you always wonder what I'm doing here. And it takes, uh, it's far away. I hope you'll enjoy it. Four years they must have watched the heavens day and night. How else would they have known a new star was in sight? It wasn't in the papers, wasn't in the TV guide. I'm not really sure how they did, but somehow they got wise. They rode their camels across the desert's burning sand. They couldn't fly, you know, there were no planes back then. Then they met old Harry who was out to steal their joy. But they brushed old Herod off and found God's baby boy. Wise men still seek him. Those on earth who realize how much they need him. Following Jesus wherever he may lead them. Wise men still seek him. Today they travel different, but they're wise men just the same. Still talking about the Savior and that blessed night he came. I hear old Herod's out there still trying to deceive. But a whole world full of Herod's can't stop those who believe. Wise men still seek him. Those on earth who how much they need him Following Jesus Wherever he may lead them Wise men Still seek him Wise men Still seek him well, They're looking for that river That never will run dry the one and only one who 
can bring meaning to their lives. They're searching for the only way through heaven's open door, bringing gifts to offer him just like they did before. Wise men still seek him. Those on earth who realize how much they need him, following Jesus wherever he may Have a safe celebration to start the new year. This COVID is running rampant and showing its ugly head again. So do everything you can to stay safe and help keep others safe as well. Thank you for joining in today.